They say this land isn't a place to live, it's a place to leave. Then why do people stay? When you first walked into my office, you told me you wanted to provide a better life for you and your family. But you gotta understand, joining the army is not a right, it's a privilege. You're adopted? Yeah. My real parents died in a car crash when I was seven. I'm here looking for my biological family. Who it is? Felicia from Facebook. Oh, hey, girl. What are you up to? Switch your call. If I lived under the conditions they did, I probably would have drank myself to death, too. You need a ride? My name is Sick Boy. Felicia, nice to meet you. Stop, stop. <laughs> what the? You in a room! Hello? How am I supposed to talk to you? Punk, you want to go? Well, good enough. Good enough. Realizes, but your actions have real life consequences. You know, what we look for and what we get aren't always the same thing. It's gonna cost extra. I'm doing the best that I can. Oh, this is you at your best? Is that what you're telling no. me? No. Maybe my family is a bunch of drunks, but I will be the one to judge that. Me. Movie, Junk Town's Finest. Released in 2014. The director is Sydney Freeland. She is also the screenwriter. Writer director Sydney Freeland was raised in Gallup, New Mexico, on the Navajo Reservation. This film was inspired by a segment done by the program 2020 titled Drunk Town USA. Freeland is Navajo, as well as the three lead actors and several supporting actors. This land isn't a place to live, it's a place to leave. Then why do people stay? This movie is written in vignettes that pop in and out and are intertwined. Each character has their own story and little segments, and it isn't until the end where all the main characters are finally in one place at the same time. The establishing shot is a montage of shots of the town, reservation, and its inhabitants. This establishing shot gives viewers a full view of who gives Drunk Town's Finest its nickname. Our first character is Sick Boy. He is a round character and a protagonist. He is played by Jeremiah Bitsu, who is Navajo. Sick Boy is a former gang member trying to turn his life around. He has a pregnant wife and is trying to join the army. He has four days to behave before he is shipped off to basic training. Sick Boy is also raising his younger sister who has just entered puberty. Sick Boy has his mother to deal with. His mother is in an abusive relationship with her white boyfriend who beats Sick Boy's mother and his little brother. Sick Boy himself has a quick temper, and he doesn't think twice to use his fists. Sick Boy generally has a good heart and has the ability to be the hero in the film. Sick Boy's character matures throughout the film when he realizes that it is only him who controls his destiny, and he realizes that he is the one who has to be there for his sister, wife, new baby, and probably in the future, his little brother. Our next character is Najoni. She is a flat secondary character. She is played by Morningstar Angeline, who is Navajo. Najoni is a lost bird. She doesn't know where she belongs. She is torn between two worlds, the Western white world and the native Navajo world. Najoni was a Navajo child adopted by a white doctor couple. Najoni was raised off the reservation, but came back to the reservation before she leaves for college to find her family, under the guise of earning volunteer hours for college. Najoni is a character who doesn't make or break the dynamics of the movie. 
Her character represents many Native children who were adopted out to other races and struggle to find themselves as many lose their self-identity. Our third character is Felicia. She is played by Carmen Moore, who is also Navajo. Her character is dynamic and antagonist. Felicia is a character who develops throughout the story. Felicia is a transgender female who lives with her grandparents. Felicia uses social media to her advantage in several ways. She uses her Facebook page to further her modeling career, and she uses it to find Johns to make money as a prostitute. Her dreams to make it off the reservation as a model are short-lived when someone she knew in high school recognized her from when she was a male and outs her in front of the modeling people. As the film progresses, Felicia grows and realizes that her grandparents love and accept her and maybe her past choices weren't the best. In conclusion, all the characters are brought together at the end of the movie. They are all in a better place, at least mentally. Sick Boy realizes that he needs to make better choices for his family and for himself. Felicia realizes that her family accepts her for who she is and learns to value herself, not by what others can get from her. Nizoni finally recognizes she can belong in both worlds and can embrace both to help lift her up and make her stronger. The one part in this movie that sticks in my mind is the relationship Felicia has with her grandparents. Her grandparents are more traditional as her grandfather is a medicine man and her grandmother assists him while working with females, but they accept and love Felicia for who she is, which is their granddaughter and not their grandson. The one scene that assists with my decision is the kitchen scene where Felicia comes in and begins to help her grandmother make bread, which is not usually a male role. Not many traditional people step outside the gender boundary lines, but Felicia's grandparents lovingly do.